All right, so we were just talking about how do we use the square root property. But before you can even think about using the square root property, there are a couple of things you have to check. Number one, in your quadratic equation, you have to make sure that you only have one instance of the variable. If you see x in multiple spots, odds are you are not going to be using the square root property. So here, this is the only term that contains x, and this guy is a square. So this is a prime candidate for using the square root property. However, in order for us to use the square root property, you have to get the square by itself first. So if you try to do the square root property right now, it's not going to go well for you. So the first thing we do is to get x squared by itself, and we do that simply by moving the 25 to the other side, and so that's minus 25 like that. Now, when we are using the square root property, we have, we have a couple of ways of, of showing this. You can do the direct application of the square root property, which would say from here, x is equal to plus or minus the square root of negative 25. That's what the square root property says. This is a direct application of it. But typically when we solve these problems, we're going to show it in a slightly different way. And from here, we simplify this. So the square root of 25 is just 5. But don't forget about this negative that we have right here. A negative inside the square root simplifies outside as i the imaginary unit. So x equals plus or minus 5i. And so now we're seeing not only can we take care of equations that could be factored, but we're seeing solutions that end up with square roots or even imaginary solutions. And you may think, well, this can't be true. You can't have uh, i as a solution. Well, let's check this out. Let's go to the calculator. Okay. Now, We've talked about this before about where i is, but in case you forgot, i is down here at the very bottom, and it's secondary to this decimal. So if you press second i, or decimal, it gives you the i. So that's what I'm going to do here. I'm going to go 5, and then second decimal to bring up the i. And now I'm going to take this, and I'm going to store it by pressing that store button. Remember the store button right here? So I'm going to store this in for x. When I hit enter, no matter what value I had stored for x, that's now overridden. It's not there anymore. And what we can do is we can type in this original equation, and it's supposed to equal 0. So if I type in x squared plus 25, you see that I get 0. And you may think, oh, I'm, I'm cheating you somehow. Well, watch this. If I did x squared plus 24 instead, so I get negative 1. So I hope that you can agree with me that 5i is a solution. Now to check negative 5i, just do negative 5 second decimal, and press that store key, and store that into x. And then we can check to see if x squared plus 25 is still equal to 0. And it is. So I know for sure that plus or minus 5i will be my solution set for this equation. Now, here's typically how we show the work. Um, the way that I like to show that application of the square root property is like this. I do take the step to move the 25 to the other side, so it's negative 25. And then I have a special pen. I've got this light blue pen that I keep using whenever I'm applying uh, the square root or square root property. So I'm going to take the square root of both sides like this. But you can't be lazy. If I'm doing this, this is an application of the square root property. And when I do that, the plus or minus happens immediately. It doesn't happen at the end when you remember it. It happens as soon as you put the square roots on both sides. So the square root of x squared, we want to say it's just x. It actually means something a little bit different, which is why we have the plus or minus, but that's for another video. Here you've got the plus or minus, the square root of 25 is 5, and the square root of the negative is still i. So in the future, this is how I'm going to show my application of the square root property. All right, let's go on to this next example. So let's take x minus 6, quantity squared, 
minus 4 equals 3. So in this problem, there is only one instance of the variable. Okay, This is the only place where I see my variable. And it's contained inside of a square. It's not the square itself, but being contained inside the square tells me that the square root property is what I want to use to solve this equation. And as we mentioned at the top of this video, we don't use the square root property until the square is by itself. So the square needs to be by itself, so I'm going to add 4 to both sides. And this gives me x minus 6 quantity squared is equal to 7. All right. So now that I've got the square by itself, this is where I'm going to take my special blue pen, and I'm going to take the square root of both sides. All right, so take the square root on the left, take the square root on the right, However, don't forget your plus or minus. You're supposed to have two solutions because this is quadratic, and without that plus or minus, you won't have two solutions. You'll only have one. And so now we have x minus 6 is equal to plus or minus. You got the square root of 7. 7 is prime, so there's nothing you can do here except to say <clears throat> the square root of 7. All right? So we're almost done. Remember, we're trying to get x by itself. So I need to move the 6 to the other side. So that means I add 6 on both sides of the equation. Now, here's the thing to keep in mind. When you already have a plus or minus working on the other side of the equation, anything that you move over to that side needs to go in front of the plus or minus. So we need to say 6 and then plus or minus <clears throat> the square root of 7. Now we could try to simplify this. You could try to split this up so you can really see what your two solutions are, but there's not anything else you can do. If I were to split this up and say x is equal to 6 plus the square root of 7, or what's the other option? x is equal to 6 minus the square root of 7. Well, I can write my answers like this, but there's no real benefit because by rewriting them like this, I can't combine these guys. There's no more work to be done. So you could separate like this, or we can just keep, them, uh, keep the answers condensed like that as 6 plus or minus the square root of 7. It's the same thing. All right, let's try one more equation here. So let's solve 3x squared minus 14 is equal to 136. All right, so paying attention to what's going on here in the problem, you see that this is the only place where I have my variable, and it is a square. Now you need to pay attention to the fact that the square is only on the x, and the square does not affect the 3. Alright, so earlier we talked about how in order to use the square root property you have to get the square by itself. So that means I need to start peeling away these layers. Solve for x squared first. So that means I need to add 14 to both sides. And now I have 3. x squared is equal to 100. 50. Be careful. Do not use the square root property yet. You can't use it yet because you don't have the square by itself. I mean, I guess technically you could use the square root property, but most of the time the students do, they end up making a very fatal mistake. So first, finish getting x squared by itself by dividing both sides of the equation by 3. So now, x squared is equal to 50. All right. So the last wall that we need to break through to get x by itself is the square. We do that, you guessed it, by using the square root property. So take the square root of both sides. <clears throat> 
don't forget the plus or minus. Let that ring in your ears that you have to use that plus or minus when you're using the square root property. All right, so square root of 50, 50 unfortunately is not a perfect square, but can we break it down so that we can see a factor that is a perfect square? And the answer is yes. You can break this down to be 25 times two. And again, keep in mind that these guys, each factor is inside of a square root. So x is equal to plus or minus. The square root of 25 is five, and the square root of two has to stay as the square root of two because two is not a perfect square and this guy does not simplify see this guy equals 5 that guy doesn't change so x is equal to plus or minus 5 square roots of 2 all right in the next video we're gonna see things get even more and more complicated but as long as you take your time and you pay attention get the square by itself and then use the square root property you're going to be right as rain